So we're going to try this approach to evaluating the limit of a function of xy by converting to polar coordinates first. And if this problem looks familiar, then that might mean you have uh, watched more than one of the, the videos in this little series, because um, I have used this function already um, without converting to polar. But I'll come back to it in case you missed that exciting episode. So the concept is if x and y are approaching the origin then that means on the graph we are approaching the radius is zero or r is zero and this allows us to take a two variable limit and work it down to a one variable limit so this very problem becomes a limit as r approaches zero that condition if we weren't approaching the origin wouldn't work so you could think of this still as a specialty item for limits but we can move graphs and re, you know relocate them or you know by shifting them left and right and up and down it's possible to do that to a function so this isn't a total waste of our time and energy so x values become r multiplied by cosine of theta and y is r multiplied by sine of theta and let me go through and finish writing the rest of this function so that would be r cosine theta plus r well I'll go ahead and use the parentheses since they're here Well, I don't have a handy trigonometry identity to fall back on, but I definitely notice that there is a factor of r in the numerator, cosine theta plus sine of theta, and there is a factor of r in the denominator, cosine theta plus, ooh, there's still a factor of r here, sine squared theta and if r becomes zero then that means this one term in the denominator becomes zero also um, and I must not neglect to reduce the fraction so if we were in an algebra or even a trigonometry class I would not jump through multiple steps at the same time algebraically but I am interested in showing you that once r becomes zero we are left with the following fraction cosine of theta plus sine of theta divided by cosine of theta so I'll put a question mark here that doesn't look like any limit answer I've ever seen before I mean r became zero but I have this it, expression here that has thetas in it still and so I want to remind you what theta was all about when we were doing a polar limit theta represents how we approach the origin theta was our direction and recall the concept is from every direction that we approach the origin we should get the same answer so if let's slide up here now if theta is zero we would be approaching the origin from along the x-axis and if theta is zero the cosine of zero would be one and the sine of zero would be zero and then that would be one so you're gonna get one I think you will find if you did watch that previous segment when we approached 
the origin along the x-axis, we got 1 as an answer. If theta is pi over 4, we would be approaching the origin from a 45 degree angle. When we evaluate this, cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 divided by 2, sine of pi over 4 is root 2 divided by 2, and there's a cosine again. This whole fraction becomes 2 with a little clever arithmetic. You have two of these in the numerator and one in the denominator. It's going to reduce to 2 when we're finished. And then we'd say, wait a second, these are different. And the concept was, if from two different directions we had two different values, then we would say, therefore, this limit does not exist. So we calculated at two places that were different, and then we get to this conclusion. What this expression is saying is, it is different for each theta. If the limit was a number like 5, this fraction would have been 5. This fraction has a variable in it, which means it's different at different values of theta. So that is sufficient by itself to show the limit doesn't exist. Allow me to do one more little demonstration. If theta is pi over 2 and we are approaching the origin from the y-axis, then this cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. This was undefined. And I believe you'll find that these three values match completely what we did test when we looked at it in a rectangular xy world. And the conclusion is the same. Either because these two are different or because we have one direction that yields an undefined value, this limit does not exist. Ta-da! Now there is one more type of limit beyond the two that I've shown. That is a very particular limit. It may even look familiar. So I'll see you next time when I pull that one out.